Chapter 24 is over medications for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So Alzheimer's and Parkinson's are progressive neurologic disorders that become common as people age. Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia and Parkinson's is a neurodegenerative disease with a slow and progressive degeneration of the nervous system. Both of these involve interrupted transmission of nerve impulses. The transmission of impulses is normally helped by neurotransmitters like dopamine and acetylcholine, which are chemicals that transmit messages from one nerve cell to another. So Alzheimer's is where we'll start, or dementia. Um, it's a progressive, incurable condition. Um, it destroys brain cells. There's a gradual loss of intellectual ability, and it affects the ability to perform ADLs. It affects the ability of remembering and reasoning. Um, in the body, there's large amounts of beta amyloid plaques that clump together between the cells in the brain. Um, other proteins twist and form tangles within neurons. The first symptom is mild forgetfulness, and in the later stages, the patient will need total care until it progresses to death. Neurons die in the areas of the brain that are important to memory and other essential mental abilities. Age is the greatest risk factor here. Genetics could play a role in development of dementia. People with Down syndrome, a common disorder involving an extra chromosome, the number 21, or tri trisomy 21, have an increased risk for Alzheimer's disease by age 50 to 60. Um, there's no treatment that can stop the progression of Alzheimer's. Drug therapy, though, can help prevent symptoms from becoming worse for a limited time. Um, so they can let the patient continue performing some daily activities for a long Longer period. So again, there's no cure, um, but they can delay the progression of the disease. There's a table on page 442 that discusses the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease in the early, middle, and late stages. So this shows you the normal brain versus the Alzheimer's, uh, the Alzheimer's um, dementia brain. Neurons die in those areas of the brain that are important to memory and language. So first we have biologic agents for Alzheimer's disease. Um, these focus on the underlying biology of the disease. The intended response is to prevent those beta amyloid plaques from forming, um, remove any existing beta amyloid plaques, and decrease cognitive and functional decline. Side effects of these are headache, dizziness, nausea, confusion, and vision changes. And allergic reactions are the major adverse effect here. Anytime we have biologics, uh, um, anaphylactic shock is, is definitely a big adverse effect. Um, no drug has been developed that will protect the neurons from the changes that happens with Alzheimer's disease, but we do have drugs that, again, can help slow the progression. So we have cholinesterase and acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. These um, reduce the activity of the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. Glutamate regulators prevent overstimulation of brain receptors, and orexin receptor antagonists inhibit, inhibit orexin activity, which is involved in the sleep and wake cycle. The intended response of all of these is to decrease dementia temporarily, um, inhibiting the degradation of acetylcholine, slowing the progression of symptoms, and improving cognitive function. Um, side effects are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach cramps, headaches, dizziness, fatigue, weakness, insomnia, and anorexia. Um, and adverse effects are abnormal heart rhythms and GI bleeding. Some additional uncommon but serious adverse effects are the difficulty urinating and seizures. Um, before we give these, we want to know, again, a complete list of drugs that the patient is using, um, the baseline cognitive function, the baseline vitals, weight, GI status, urinary status, hemoglobin, and hematocrit. I want to know if they can swallow, and I want to know if they have any um, liver or kidney problems. I want to continuously monitor their cognitive function to see if the disease is progressing um, and you know to see how we're doing there. Monitor blood pressure, heart rate, intake and output, and daily weight. Monitor that swallowing ability. Instruct patients to call for help when they get out of bed and monitor for signs of GI discomfort. Because acetylcholinesterase inhibitors can cause GI bleeding, I want to know if there are any signs of bleeding. Um, 
teach your patients to take these as prescribed um, and to not crush any extended release medications. And this includes your um, teaching the caregivers as well, not just the patients. That's important to note. Um, keep their follow-up appointments. These can cause dizziness, weakness, and fatigue. Um, notify the prescriber about any signs of bleeding. Take with food to avoid any GI upset. And again, the goal is temporary improvement. We want to make sure that they understand that this is not a cure. Um, include information about safe dosage in proper storage and instruct patients and caregivers about the desired outcomes of temporary improved memory, attention, reasoning, language, and the ability to perform simple tasks. Again, stress that these are not a cure. That can be really um, difficult for someone to understand, especially a caregiver. Um, you know, they desperately want a cure, but we're not able to cure it. We're just able to hopefully push off the symptoms for a, a period of time. So with these drugs, we won't talk about pregnancy and breastfeeding or pediatrics because Alzheimer's or dementia is something that we see in our elderly. Um, so in our older adults, we want to use these cautiously, especially if they have a history of GI bleeding, liver, kidney, or heart disease. Um, use rivastigmine cautiously with asthma or COPD patients. Um, in our older frail females, they should not take higher doses of donepezil or Aricept, um, and these can cause increased incontinence. Remind family members to ensure that the older adult has the opportunity to use the bathroom every couple hours while they're awake and at least once during the night because of that. Um, so Parkinson's is a slow progressive degenerative disease of the nervous system. We don't know the cause of it. Um, risk factors include um, an age older than 50, genetics, environmental factors like exposure to toxins over a long period of time, um, abnormal genes, um, there are also several drugs that have caused secondary Parkinson's disease. Secondary Parkinson's disease, again, would be related to taking those medications. Um, on page 447, there's a table with the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, and then there's also a table of drugs that cause secondary Parkinson's disease. Um, the function of the basal ganglia is to make muscle movements smooth and to help coordinate changes in posture. Um, so these, um, Parkinson's is related to a decrease in dopamine, the nerve cell de and de sorry nerve cell degeneration in that substantia nigra. Um, symptoms are tremors at rest, rigidity, stiffness, a stooped posture, balance issues, and these drugs uh, make movement easier and pr help prolong normal function. No drugs have been developed that will reverse the progression of Parkinson's disease, but we do use these medications to help um, improve movement and, and enable patients to function effectively. Dopaminergic and dopamine agonists increase that dopamine activity in the brain. Um, COM-T inhibitors allow more levodopa to reach the brain, which helps with the dopamine. Monoamine oxidase um, B inhibitors inhibit enzymes that break down dopamine in the brain. Um, so carbidopa prevents levodopa from being converted to dopamine before it reaches the brain. When carbidopa is added to levodopa, lower doses of levodopa can be used, leading to reduced side effects like nausea and vomiting. They also restrict the action of acetylcholine, which is an important chemical messenger in the brain that helps regulate muscle movement, sweat gland function, and intestinal function. Um, so we also have anticholinergics that block cholinergic nerve impulses that help control muscles. The intended response is to decrease the signs and symptoms and relieve tremors and rigidity. Side effects are um, dizziness, nausea, hypotension. Um, there is a table of common side effects of Parkinson's medications. Um, let me just find it. Um, let's see, side effects and adverse effects on page 451. So some adverse effects of carbidopa, levodopa specifically are the depression with suicidal tendencies, neutropenia, neuroleptic malignant syndrome of apomorphine, this um, life-threatening CNS depression or central nervous system depression, respiratory depression, coma, and cardiac arrest. Bromocryptine is shock, acute myocardial infarction, which is your heart attack. Primapexil is narcolepsy, and COMT inhibitors is neuroleptic malignant syndrome and rhabdomyolysis. 
So before I give any of these, I want a complete list of the drugs that the patient is taking. I want to know their baselines for blood pressure, heart rate, and respiratory rate. I want to know baselines for neurologic and mental status, dyskinesia, rigidity, tremors, and gait. Um, I want to know if they can swallow. I want to know if they have kidney or liver disease and if they're pregnant. I want to continuously monitor vitals, reassess mental status and ask about side effects, and assess for bladder distension, monitoring their intake and output as well. Keep track of their bowel movements and check their bowel sounds. Um, the uh, rotigotine patch, I want to monitor their skin too. Teach these patients and their caregivers to report any side effects immediately, um, not to take double doses of any of the drugs. Um, drugs are used to control symptoms. Again, these are not a cure. Um, don't overdo physical activities. Avoid falling and injuries. Take drugs that cause GI upset with food and milk. <clears throat> um, regular eye exams are necessary if they're taking anticholinergics and avoid large amounts of chocolate and caffeine and any overheating in hot weather. There's a box on page 452 that lists all the foods to avoid when taking MAOIs um, or MAOB inhibitors. Um, MAOIs, sorry, monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Um, these foods contain tyramine, which is an amino acid that can cause severe hypertension in patients that are taking MAOIs. Um, instruct the caregiver to report any changes in swallowing ability to the prescriber because of the increased risk of aspiration. So most drugs for Parkinson's disease have a moderate likelihood of increasing the risk for birth defects or fetal harm. So we would use them when the benefits outweigh the risks. Um, Promocryptine, might not want to be used during pregnancy because it stops the production of breast milk. But Parkinson's is extremely rare in women of childbearing age, so usually we don't have to worry about these meds in pregnancy and lactation. Um, assess the older adults' need for assistive devices like a cane or a walker for ambulating, and our older adults might be more sensitive to the effects, so teach them to change positions slowly and use handrails on the stairs and in the shower. Um, watch for confusion, hallucinations, and uncontrolled body movements. And that is it for chapter 24.